These are the 10 most antioxidant rich fruits in the world. And full disclaimer, some of them are weird and you have to might go to weird places to find them, but trust me, you'll be able to find them. And these are all based on what is called an ORAC score. An ORAC score is the total oxidative binding capacity. Like it's how much power the antioxidants have based on a scoring system. Like the higher the number, the more potent the antioxidant is at scavenging free radicals. It's a very important number and it's pretty well vetted. It doesn't just mean nothing, it's very important. So we'll start with the first one, which isn't in any particular order. Like number one isn't the highest, okay? So this is cherries. Now cherries have an ORAC score of 3,747. So super high up there. They seem to have a mix of different antioxidants in them. And there's a study published in the journal Nutrients that took a look at 29 studies regarding cherries that were up to two weeks in length. And they found pretty crazy results across a bunch of different categories. Studies that reduced oxidative stress, eight out of 10. Studies that reduced inflammation, 10 out of 11. Studies that reduced exercise muscle soreness, eight out of nine. Blood pressure, five out of seven studies. Arthritis symptoms, five out of five studies. Sleep issues, four out of four studies. So all these different studies in different categories had a huge lion's shares being positive results because of cherries. Hugely impactful. Now let's move on to the next one, which is strawberries. Strawberries have an ORAC score of 4,302. So we're climbing up here. But there's an interesting study that looked at strawberries. It was wild because it looked at the relationship between strawberries like as a puree on bread and how it would impact white bread and rye bread and a couple other things. They found that compared to a lot of different fruits, strawberries and then some kind of obscure berry blend that also contains strawberries were the only fruits to reduce the glycemic impact of the bread to a notable degree, 36% in this particular case. Now, this could be because of the fiber, but if that was the case, the other fruits would have done it the same. So it seems as though strawberries have such an antioxidant potential that it may have helped glucose regulation. The next one is raspberries, and this one's specifically cool for DNA damage. ORAC score of 5,065. Okay, so the study that looked at raspberries was really interesting. It was published in the International Journal of Molecular Sciences, and it demonstrated that there was a three to eight fold increase in the expression of DNA repair genes. What that means is that something was happening that was triggering the body to produce more DNA repair genes, ultimately resulting in a significant decrease in DNA damage when raspberries were consumed. So what is it about raspberries? Well, it could be a number of different things. There's a number of different tannins, a number of different polyphenols and antioxidants in them, but you can also just have that high ORAC score when there's that good concentration of them. We can't always pinpoint what polyphenols or what flavonoids are doing what. We can only look at the data. Next up is blackberries with an ORAC score of 5,905. And it seems as though the big piece here with blackberries is something called an elagitannin. Now, elagic acid is something that you'll see in raspberries and some other fruits. Tannins you'll also see. So elagitannins are, just like the name implies, kind of a combination. Now, we know that it's a high ORAC score, but most of the data that we've seen has been in rodents. So we can't 100% take it to the bank, but the rodent model data is still interesting. They took rats, for instance, and they actually induced sort of like mucosal damage to their gut they found that blackberry extract, like having these elagitannins essentially, helped repair the gut, but also decreased the ulcer index by 88%. So they got less ulcers. Also reduced the impact of ethanol-induced stress. So essentially alcohol normally damages our gut mucosal layer. It seems as though elagitannins that are in like blackberries can help protect that. It doesn't give you a license to go drink a bunch, but it does mean that it's pretty gut protective. And a lot of our inflammation seems to start in our gut. So this could be interesting. Then we have plums. Believe it or not, plums are super high up there. 6,100 on the ORAC score. So we're climbing up quite a bit. And there's a study published in the journal Functional Foods that looked at plums, then it looked at plums that had the anthocyanins removed. So it was like a plum juice plus a plum juice that didn't have anthocyanins versus control, placebo. And what they found with this is that only the full score like plum juice that still had the anthocyanins had an impact. And the impact was interesting. It helped prevent thrombosis. So it reduced clotting, 
which is really interesting. Not everyone needs that. And that's the interesting thing is antioxidants work in different categories, right? We can't always pinpoint what they're doing. But in this particular case, since the anthocyanins seemed to be the driver there, we have to assume that it's an antioxidant related effect. Next up is black currant extract. We have 7,957 on the ORAC score. Now with black currant, again, we have a high amount of anthocyanins, like one of the highest amounts. But what's interesting is when you look at the data here, it seems to be, well, we've actually seen data before on black currants being really good for bone density. Now we have to speculate that this could be related to the antioxidants. So there's a study that demonstrated that bone density improved, like overall bone loss, decreased in a dose dependent fashion with more black current. There was a study that took a look at like 392 milligrams of black current versus 794 milligrams of black current versus placebo. Basically the more black current, the more bone preservation there was. So again, what's the exact mechanism? I mean, if you're taking some of the stress off the body, then the body can reallocate resources to preserving the bone mass. So as you're, when you look at these antioxidants and how this works, it's not like the antioxidants are going in there and specifically reallocating bone. What they're doing is they're taking the stress off of another area of the body so that the body can say, hey, thank you, I can go back to my, putting my resources here, in which case is bone. Next up is a really cool one, it's cranberries. Okay, and you can get this effect from dried cranberries too with an ORAC score of, get this, 9,090. So yeah, a bunch of different polyphenols, but the big one that we're looking at is a flavonoid called quercetin, which you also get in capers, you can get in asparagus, you can get in supplement form. Quercetin has a lot of literature behind it, especially when it comes down to the brain. Now, when we look at the literature of the brain, we see that there's some brain antioxidant effects with quercetin, specifically with what's called microgliosis. So when you have an increase of the microglia in the brain, which is sort of the immune response that happens in our brain. We have our immune system that's in our body, but our brain, in a weird colloquial way, almost has its own isolated immune system to deal with brain stuff. So having elevated microglia, that's an indicator that you have this like stress in the brain. So as far as brain stress, cranberry might be the best route to go. Plus that ORAC score is really good either way. The problem is the most common way that people eat cranberries is gonna be like sweetened dried cranberries. So get unsweetened dried cranberries. They're not the sweetest thing in the world, but they're delicious. I also put a link down below because I know Thrive Market carries them. If you want to get 30% off your whole order through Thrive Market and try some out. A lot of the other things that I'm talking about on this list, you can get through Thrive Market as well. They've got a bunch of different antioxidant supplements. They've got a bunch of different foods that contain these things. They've got the dried unsweetened cranberries. So that link down below gets you 30% off your full grocery order through Thrive. So no matter what kind of diet you're doing, if you're paleo, if you're vegan, keto, whatever, it doesn't really matter. You can sort by different diet types. That link gets you 30% off whatever you want to put in your cart plus a free $50 gift. So it's a huge discount. So check them out, top line of the description, right underneath this video. Then it gets delivered to your doorstep in a couple of days, easy peasy. Then we have wild blueberries. All right, big difference between regular blueberries and wild blueberries. Wild blueberries have an ORAC score of 9,621. Regular blueberries are around four to 5,000. Okay, so we're talking like double the amount of anthocyanins and just about double the antioxidant profile. So there was a study published in the European Journal of Nutrition had subjects consume 25 grams of wild blueberries, dried wild blueberry extract, compared to placebo. And then they looked at their oxidized DNA baseline. So that's your DNA that gets damaged and oxidized at baseline. Like we all have a certain level that gets oxidized. The oxidized baseline went from 12.5% down to nine and a half percent. So even though it only sounds like 3%, that's a 25% change just by consuming something that has a high ORAC score like wild blueberries. But additionally, it reduced the hydrogen peroxide induced DNA damage from 45% down to about 37%. So again, you have all kinds of different things that would oxidize DNA or cause oxidized damage. One of the most common ones is going to be via hydrogen peroxide. Yes, literally like the same stuff you would swish around in your mouth or put on a wound, but when it's created in your body, it can be damaging. Now we get into the really weird ones, but the ones that have extraordinary numbers of ORAC score, like it's insane. We have black raspberries, commonly mistaken for blackberries, but we're talking over a 19,000 on the ORAC score. 
Okay, now these are like, they have a hollow inside. I've actually seen them before and you can get them. They're just rare. You might have to look more for a black raspberry powder online than an actual just direct black raspberry. So there's a study that was published in the journal Functional Foods that was quite interesting. So it shows that black raspberries have a direct impact on our immune system. We just don't know exactly how it's working. Like seeing pretty robust decreases in chemokine ligands. So that is an indicator of how active the immune system or how overactive the immune system is, which is quite interesting. And the last one, which is one that you've probably seen combined with some supplements, but you can actually get it direct, is going to be rose hips. Rose hips, we are talking over 90,000 on the ORAC score. What is it about rose in general? Because raspberries are technically part of the rose family. Okay, so you've got lycopene in rose hips, you've got beta carotene, you might even have a small amount of anthocyanins, but the potency is just so extreme. Now, the effectiveness of it seems to be quite strong too, specifically with the immune system. That's why typically when you look at vitamin C, it'll say vitamin C with rose hips, because not only do rose hips have vitamin C, they seem to work synergistically because of the other vitamins and some of the even B vitamins that are in rose hips. Could you directly eat rose hips? You can, it's just gonna be kind of unrealistic long-term. So you usually get a rose hip powder or a rose hip edible oil and you can even mix it in. Like even rose water is gonna have extract of rose hip in it. So it's not a typical fruit, although technically it is. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you tomorrow.